Hey guys, even here, and in today's video we get a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is Andrew Jack, basically the weighings uh, for Texas Pro, and they did this cool thing, they actually measured these athletes on stage to see how much they weigh, and apparently Andrew Jack is nearly 300 freaking pounds at one day out, guys, 299 which I believe is like a 20 pound gain from his last year's, let's say the best edition, which was the Arnold Classic in my opinion, he was in good condition, and I remember Chris Asito saying that he was uh, 280 on that stage, and apparently he got up to 300 pounds, which is insane, which is really freaking huge, and I know you might say that uh, Samson Dauda was 300 pounds on stage, and he's a little bit shorter, but no, 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 Samson Dauda was actually 300 pounds before he flew to the US, before he did a peak week, so realistically, Samson Dauda was like 285 maybe, on the day before the stage, and they talked about this, Milos Archev and Dennis James on the Madness podcast, and Milos kinda agreed that his weight was probably at around uh, 280-85 pounds on stage, but of course, his category is open bodybuilding, it's open because there is no weight limit, they did this just for fun, to see how big these guys are, and most likely did it because Andrew Jacked was coming, and they wanted to show everybody what kind of a freak show we're gonna have at Texas. Pro 2024, and I don't know, man, this is gonna be nuts, so 300 pounds, but what kind of 300 pounds, I wonder what his conditioning is gonna be on that stage, is it gonna be the same conditioning like at that Arnold Classic from last year, or is it gonna be like the Mr. Olympia condition, because at a Mr. Olympia, he wasn't in the best shape, Arnold Classic, he was lean, and this time around, we have no idea, what kind of conditioning he's bringing, he didn't really show us his physique almost at all, like, the last update was at four and a half weeks out, so we don't really have anything, but uh, we can see his face right now, and you might say that his face is round, but really, that's because he has a crazy jawline, like, his jaw is super muscular, like everything else, and I mean, the, the, the chin bones and everything, like, that's just the structure of his skull, you know, he has, a, he has a big jaw, and that's it, really, if you look at the, if you pay attention to, like, the details, you will notice that his face is kind of chiseled, like, it's not super, super dry, I don't think it will ever be, like, a Dorian Yates kind of uh, face, because he's just, he just looks different, you know, he has a little bit uh, thicker skin and so on, but uh, I think this is pretty lean, like, I don't know if he's gonna be super shredded, most shredded ever, but against these guys, he doesn't need to be that, that shredded, but I think his conditioning is gonna be good, I think it's gonna be very, very good, I don't even need to say it, but good enough to win this show quite easily. Now, in that last update we saw from Andrew Jack, it looked like he improved his arms more so than anything else. The arms looked much, much bigger than ever before, and actually they're kind of flowing well with the rest of his physique, so it probably means that he grew his arms the most, but he grew everything else. If everything else stayed the same and only his arms grew, it wouldn't look this uh, proportionate. I mean, his arms are definitely the most dominant uh, body part here, but they're actually flowing well with the physique, you know, I'm getting like flex wheeler vibes. So this looked very, very good in this pose, and his conditioning at four and a half weeks out was definitely good enough, like he was probably even ahead of time, in four and a half weeks from this point, he definitely could have gotten really shredded, but once again, he doesn't need to be 100% on to win this show, and I think it's even a better strategy to put all of his energy and focus into this show, because it's gonna be an easy show for him to win, it's better to save some fuel, like be maybe 80% or like 90% max, and then go 101% for the Mr. Olympia, and that's kind of what I'm expecting, but I was wondering uh, at this point, what did he improve about his side poses, because that was the biggest flaw of Andrew Jack earlier, like yeah sure arms and forearms could have used more growth, but I think he was losing the most uh, in the side poses, especially the thickness, like uh, chest to back thickness and hamstring uh, size, and RX Muscle did a little interview with him uh, the day before the show, and they were actually quite direct, Sadiq Faruqi was very direct with his questions, he was asking uh, Andrew like uh, what was the main focus, how much did Asito feed him to get into this size, and so on, but he was very vague with his responses, one thing he did say however, it was that his main focus in the offseason was actually to bring up the hamstrings, 
So he's probably, if he's saying it, he's probably proud of the progress he made in that body part. And if that is truly improved, then I feel like I'm gonna have Andrew Jack in my top four at the Mr. Olympia at least, at least, potentially even higher. So I think this year is gonna be a very, very good year for Andrew Jack. Once again, in this interview, you can see his face and you can see like all the lines. He is definitely lean. He's definitely stage ready, but you know, I'm wondering, I can't wait to see him actually tomorrow on stage to see what kind of improvements he made, but. I, I really can't wait to see him on the Mr. Olympia against all of those guys. If he made improvements that it seems like he made, he's gonna be extremely dangerous. Now, if we are talking about Andrew Jack potentially winning the Mr. Olympia or placing like inside of the top three, he needs to go against uh, this freaking monster. Can Andrew Jack do anything about this? Like, he can't play hardest game. He will never beat this freaking tick, this freaking round. Like, look at the freaking uh, arms here, and then the, the, the lats, how much they're popping out. Like, simply the, the, the size, the roundness, the fullness of everything. Like, Andrew Jack, with his height, with his frame, he will never have anything like this. Like, if he was like this, this big, he would have to be like, I don't know, 400 pounds on stage. So this cannot be his game. He needs to go with, like, the lines, the aesthetics, the, the, the height, you know, that kind of stuff. Because Hadi, I mean, at this point, he is so freaking insane i don't know how, how what to say really so Hadi definitely did get bigger over the years and at this point at uh, nine we actually 10 weeks out he says in the caption so right now we're about uh, nine weeks out but this photo i guess was taken a week ago and at this point here it seems like he's gonna bring some crazy level of size as well as conditioning so he needs to be super shredded that's his game he can afford to be super shredded as he was at the Arnold classic for example so derek if he got in a, to that point of conditioning like like how he did for the Arnold classic he would probably lose more of his legs and so on and Hadi, once when he gets in that kind of shape he still has the size the fullness because he is so freaking complete like he doesn't really he doesn't really lack much Maybe, like, you can say that his, you know, shoulders are, you know, a little bit um, oily, right? And his forearms are a little bit smaller compared to his arms. And one leg is slightly smaller than the other, but those are just, like, minor details. Really, Hadi has everything, basically. Crazy abs, big chest, uh, big lats, uh, arms also very good. Legs are absolutely insane, and it seems like he improved his back lately, and when he's in crazy condition, the back has also crazy details, sort of the glutes and the hamstrings, so very, very complete bodybuilder, it's gonna be very extremely difficult for anybody to beat him this year, and in my opinion, nobody is gonna do it, most likely. Like, he, there is a possibility of some guys doing it, but the odds are definitely in his favor, at least in my opinion, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. And also, we got a physique update from Hunter Labrada at four weeks out of the Italy Pro, where he's gonna face freaking Nexilla. So that's gonna be a very interesting show as well. But uh, after seeing what Hunter is looking like right now at four weeks out, I think he's most likely gonna win that show. I mean, again, he was sixth at the Mr. Olympia, and uh, it seems like he's bringing very, very good package this year. It looked like he improved in the offseason, and I think we're gonna see that finally on stage in four weeks. Here you can see Honey Rambert in the background, and you might wonder, is he Hunter's new coach? But no, no, apparently he just went to the Avogy Nutrition headquarters, and they trained together and they filmed it for YouTube. And there are some uh, screen grabs you can see right here uh, as he posed after the, the training session. And you know, he looks good. He definitely looks great. Uh, he's gonna face an Exila once again. Exila is a mass monster. That's true. And he never really got in condition, especially this year. So if he brings crazy conditioning, it's gonna be a battle, but, you know, I think Hunter just has a much better shape, much better proportions, you know, small waist, big arms, good X-frame, good enough legs, good back, like, everything is there, like, he's very, very complete, and he has a pretty nice structure, so against Nexilla, I would say he's also the favorite, but if Nexilla brings something insane, some crazy level of conditioning, which I don't think it's very likely to happen, but if he does that, then it might be a battle. If he looks the same as he looked at the Dubai Pro, I, I'm pretty sure Hunter is winning that, quite easily, actually. Rubio Mosquera, in some poses, doesn't look aesthetic at all. And I don't know if there is much he can change, really. 
Like, uh, I don't think his conditioning was horrible at Dubai Pro. I mean, it definitely could have been better, but it wasn't like he was completely off. It wasn't Hassan Mustafa conditioning. And, you know, his posing, his presentation, he still did not perfect it uh, to the point where uh, Nick Walker has. Like, Nick Walker is able to make his physique look much more aesthetic when he's posing, when he's hitting the poses. Uh, he found a way. And he has, like, similar flaws like Nick Zill. Not, like, body part-wise, you know, flaw of Nick Walker. One of the biggest flaw, basically, muscularity-wise, is his legs. And that's Nick Zill's strongest point. But, like, the midsection, the waist, and, like, the, 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 the axe frame, the V taper, that's not Nick's strongest suit. And neither is Nick Zilla's. But uh, Nick found a way, and Exila didn't figure it out quite yet, and he might never will, maybe he can't uh, present his physique that well so we don't notice his uh, structural flaws. So, the way it is right now, I definitely do have Hunter as the favorite at Italy Pro. I would be surprised if an Exila showed up like super, super diced and just won on the freak factor. Because Hunter also has a lot of size, it's difficult to notice it when he's not being compared, and you know why, I don't have to repeat myself a thousand times, but basically, you're gonna see on the stage that Hunter is not that far behind in terms of muscularity, and he definitely has a better shape, and he's probably gonna be very, very conditioned, so he's definitely the favorite heading to the Italy Pro, but, you know, things might change. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, about bodybuilding, please stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.